I'm George Ryle, and this is the Great British Chef's Signature Series. So the Garden Cafe is a unique venue. The museum itself, they got a grant from the lottery to do a big redevelopment, which is where we are now. Mutton, I think it's probably quite an underused meat. People always want spring lamb, but actually mutton can work well. But it, you sort of need to know a bit what you're doing to avoid that sort of chewing on leather feel. If the ingredients are good, you need to know what you're doing. You need to treat them with thought, but you just don't need to do loads to it. Hi, I'm George Ryle. I'm the head chef at the Garden Museum Cafe, which is where we are today. And we're gonna be cooking mutton chops with Greek salad. We've got these lovely Yorkshire mutton chops from our butcher up in North Yorkshire. As you can see, they've got quite a lot of fat on here and raw lamb fat is not really a good vibe. So first thing to do is pan on sort of a medium heat and we're just gonna try and render out some of that fat and basically cook the fat a bit. I'm gonna give it a season. Mutton, obviously being an older sheep, is not so great. It can be quite tough, so we're gonna keep it pretty pink. I think if it's not handled well, it can definitely be super tough. So a little bit of oil just to help the process along, although not loads because as the fat renders, that's gonna release into the pan. So they're sort of, so we're gonna go fat side down, couple of minutes just to get that fat coming out, get that fat cooked, because you don't really wanna eat raw, raw lamb fat, not, not the one. So yeah, you can see we're getting some caramelization on the edges of the fat here, and it was just starting to melt away that sort of rawness from the, um, from the lamb. So again, move it around the pan. And if your kitchen is just filling with smoke, do just turn it down a little bit. Yeah, mutton, I think inevitably will make a bit of a comeback. Um, I would expect as our sort of food systems become a bit more stretched, I think people have to get their heads into the idea that they can't just have everything they want to eat at the exact time they want to eat it. So, you know, with a bit of education and a bit of understanding about how to use it, um, how to cook it, where it comes from. Yeah, I th I'm sure it will make a comeback. If they're falling over, sometimes just resting the tongs on the side of the pan like that can help to prevent that. So that this is the sort of stage we want to see. Really nice golden colour on these on the fat and it's melting away. So I'm actually just going to turn this up a little bit and then we're going to cook it on both sides. So, and then you don't really need to add any extra fat because you'll see there that you've got, a, like that's the fat that's come out of the lamb. So we don't really need to add any extra oil. So just that tiny drizzle of oil at the beginning. And then it's basically gonna cook in its own fat, which is a nice thing as well, definitely. When cooking meat in general, you don't wanna cook it from fridge cold. So these have been out of the fridge for a good few hours this morning. So sort of room temperature. And therefore I think they're gonna take about three or four minutes in the pan. We're just gonna keep turning them over and over. And there's a fine line between sort of delicious and then chewy as an old boot. Which is, I think, yeah, which is the perception that lots of people have about mutton, I think. Each time you flip them, you probably want to move them around to a different area of the pan just because they're sucking heat out of the pan. So the bits where there is no lamb are the hottest bits of the pan. The bits where the lamb are, are probably the coolest bits of the pan. Right, so just rested these up on the side of the pan here because we're just going to check how cooked they are. And if I give them a little squeeze, they've got I think they're probably good to go. So basically you're looking for a good bit of give in the, in the flesh. That's a real thing you sort of need to practice. Practice makes perfect on that one. But one trick is to find something thin and sharp, give it a little prod, and then onto your lip. If that burns your lip, you've overcooked it. <laughs> and if it's fridge cold in the middle, you've undercooked it. <laughs> so when it touches on your lip, warm around body temperature is gonna be perfect for something like this. So that's just gonna go over the top. Waste not, want not on that front. And then what we've got here is a sauce which we made from the mutton bones. We asked the butcher for bones and trim from the mutton. Uh, we roast that quite hard in the oven. Separately, we sweat down lots of veg. The bones go in, white wine, and then chicken stock. So we try and get as much flavor as we can into the sauces, but without having to reduce it, reduce it right down. Because essentially then you lose the essence of the meat that's in it, I think. This tastes lovely and lamby which is exactly what we want. And then basically I've sort of prepared the, the basis of the salad earlier, which we're just gonna finish. So it's lovely ripe tomatoes, cucumber, red onion, black olives and dried oregano. And give that a season and then gonna finish it with basically loads of olive oil and a good bit of vinegar. I always think about, you know, when you go abroad and they plonk down, you're eating in a taverna somewhere and they plonk down that thing which is the oil, the vinegar and the toothpicks. It's a bit like that, you just want to get loads and loads of vinegar in there. So we're basically, we're ready to plate. These have had a nice, a nice rest. A good bit of sort of liquid has come out of them. That's, that's good. That's what happens as they, as they relax, they release a bit of their liquid. So salad is lovely, perfectly ripe tomatoes, lovely cu cucumbers. 
a very thinly sliced red onion, black olives, and heaps of dried oregano. So the reason you sort of salt the tomatoes at the beginning is so that they release plenty of their juice, and you want you want plenty of that in there. So the mutton chops are going to go on, and I think this yeah this is a real sort of typical dish of the Garden Museum Cafe. It's really simple and a, a nod to tradition. Hopefully this Greek salad. I don't know that many Greek people to verify this, but I think it's quite a good one. Add just a little bit of this barrel-aged feta over the top and finish the whole thing with a little lick of this lovely mutton sauce. So that's, and that's just gonna run into the sort of dressing from the salad and be super delicious. And there we are. This is my mutton chops and Greek salad.